Hello, I'm Rex Basterfield, and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Quilkin Sim Rhythmicon. Back in the 1920s, the avant-garde composer Henry Cowell got interested in the idea of matching rhythmic sequences with the harmonic series. He got Leon Theremin very interested in the idea and eventually commissioned him to make a device that would enable him to hear what the sound would be like. Theremin came up with what I think is a, a remarkably ingenious design for the instrument. His system involved having two spinning discs. The one at the back had its own motor and span very quickly, and the one at the front span much slower and that's represented by this graphic here. These holes allowed light to pass through the pitch wheel and the holes in the rhythm wheel. Each key on the Rhythmicon lit a lamp up um, across the diameter of the two wheels. This means that for one rotation the lowest key pulsed once per rotation. The second key pulsed twice per rotation and so on up to the highest key which pulses 16 times per rotation. Now when a hole lined up with the mirror and photo tube sensor remember the pitch disc at the back is spinning many times faster so when one of these holes lines up, it allows through several pulses of light during the alignment time or open time. These pulses of light operate in the audio frequency range because the pitch wheel is spinning so fast. The pulses landing on the photo tube go through a preamplifier and a power amplifier to provide the audio signal and the rhythmic frequency of those pitches. The pitch wheel has six holes on the first ring, 12 on the second, 18 on the third ring, and right up to the edge, 96 holes. Due to the arrangement of holes on the rhythm wheel, we can take a measure, which is one rotation, and have two pulses per rotation, seven pulses per rotation, nine pulses per rotation, up to 16 pulses per rotation or measure. Since each key has its own lamp, which is aligned uh, across the diameter of both wheels, the instrument was polyphonic and could play up to 16 notes at 16 different beat divisions. Due to the arrangement of the holes on the pitch wheel, 
like I said, we have 6, 12, 18, 24. The frequency of these holes follows the integer harmonic series from the fundamental on the lowest note up to the F16, the 16th partial on the outer ring. This means that we can create polyrhythms where each beat division has its own pitch. As a guide, this indicator flashes once per revolution, which indicates the start of a beat and coincides. If I play middle C, we get the fundamental. C sharp plays the second partial at twice the rate. D3 plays the next circle up, which is divided by 3 and 3 times the frequency. B e flat adds quarter notes. And we can play any combination of keys we want up to E flat 5. So, Henry Cowell was able to explore polyrhythms. I got so interested in this Rhythmicon that I wanted to try it for myself, and so I made the Gorkham Sim Rhythmicon. Uh, you may not find it very useful as a production tool, but the results can be interesting at least, I think. While I was researching this uh, device, I made lots of personal notes, um, which I've included in the user guide. It was written by me and uh, go into much greater depth than I have just. So if you're interested, have a look at those notes. So now I'll run through the controls. We have a control for the rhythm wheel, which on the authentic original rotated all the time. Here we can adjust the speed. And the acceleration of the motor, which is, or deceleration, which is when we change the speed, how long it takes. So let's set that to a high value. We can have it change really quickly. I should mention the BPM readout here relates to the quarter notes, which is what you get when you press E flat. The pitch wheel, which as I mentioned before, had its own motor, and you can set the, the speed of that motor here, which will determine the pitch of the audio pulses. Again, the acceleration sets the rate at which they change to simulate the motor speeding up and slowing down. On the optics panel, you have uh, two knobs to simulate various aspects of the optical system, which uses a filament lamp, um, mirrors, and the photo tube. So the beam is effectively the width of operation of a hole on the rhythm wheel passing in front of the photo tube. And uh, this will determine the end value length. I calculated 12 millimeters is probably about right. Filament lamp has a certain uh, 
time before it's fully bright, a sort of warm-up time. And I've got no information on this, so I've set a wide range uh, to simulate that warm-up of the filament lamp. This will affect the startup of the sound. So if I set it very long, 100 milliseconds... You'll hear the pulses increase in volume as the lamp warms up. And 30 milliseconds sounds pretty good. Or it can be instant. In which case you might get a click if you start in the middle of a pulse. Like that. So 30 milliseconds pretty good. Of course, the amplifier used vacuum tubes, valves, which are known to create a certain amount of uh, asymmetrical saturation. So with the amp control, you can go from very low level up to about six and beyond six, you start to get distortion introduced. As you may have noticed, it goes up to 11, of course. I could find no information about the loudspeakers originally used, but I know that speakers from that period of time, the 30s, weren't particularly good quality. So the speaker knob is a macro that simulates the effect of going from um, a small loudspeaker to a large one. I gave way to the temptation to make this plug-in uh, more versatile and flexible than the original instrument was. Hence you have this panel which I call anachronisms. So, first off we have the sync mode and authentic is the wheel constantly running. Or we can change that to sync on first. the original couldn't possibly achieve. The oscillator type gives alternative waveforms to the, um, the closest I could get to what I heard on YouTube for the original, which is the authentic one, but we can also have sine wave, saw, song, and noise. So you have a, a choice of sounds. The authentic envelope shape is a little bit like um, a Gaussian or bell curve, um, but you have a choice of other envelope shapes. For the tempo, you can either the, use the rhythm wheel speed, or you can switch over to the from the AW, in which case this becomes not available, and the BPM is from the DAW and based on quarter notes. Of course, if you do use this plugin in uh, a piece of music, you may want to track the, the DAW's tempo quickly, in which case you need to turn the acceleration up to maximum speed, but keep in mind that the acceleration will be available for a DAW change of tempo. So what if you want to play tunes or melodies on this uh, instrument where you can change from the authentic, where you can set any bass frequency, any fundamental frequency you want, or you can change over to MIDI. Two things happen when you select MIDI. One is that the speed knob moves in whole semitone intervals. And of 
Of course, the acceleration <laughs> is effectively a portamento control. Let's set that to minimum. The other thing that happens is that the MIDI keys below middle C offset the tuning uh, in a chromatic way. So I'll demonstrate that now by operating the MIDI keyboard. And finally, you have the audio. In the authentic mode, these two knobs are active, or you can switch to direct mode, in which case the audio processing is inactive. And if you turn off the built-in reverb as well, you can add whatever processing you want to in your own DAW. And at any time, you can return from whatever settings you've got to the default authentic mode by clicking that button. So that's my uh, rather weird Quilk and Sim rhythmic on for you. And I doubt very much you'll find much of a musical application for it, but I think it's an interesting revival of, uh, of an ancient relic from the electronic music past, which is sometimes, in my view, incorrectly described as the very first drum machine. So have a look in the user guide if you want to find out more information. And I'll say until the next time, bye.